Friend, enemy of frenemy. How do Indians view the rise of China and its implications for India's rise? Join the conversation on this important topic by taking the China Challenge Survey. The survey has been put together by researchers at the Takshashila Institution. Answer our 10 simple questions and let your voice be heard in shaping India's policy towards China. For more details, log on to www.takshashila.org.in or you can click on the link and take the survey in the show notes. Welcome to All Things Policy, a daily podcast by the Takshashila Institution. We are a bunch of policy nerds based in Bengaluru, and we like bringing fresh perspectives to Indian affairs and Indian perspectives to global affairs. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back and join us for today's chat. Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of All Things Policy. Our topic for today's podcast is an interesting one and I'm joined by my good colleagues Arindam Goswami and Ashwin Prasad. So today we'll talk about the idea of heroes and what that means in the context of public policy administration and reform. It all started with Ashwin bringing this up as a topic of discussion in a larger group format and it got us all thinking about it. We all have had heroes at different points in time, right? And an archetypical hero is someone that has struggled, faced daunting challenges that would uh, deter other individuals from the chosen path and then has triumphed in his or her pursuits. We see heroes most commonly in fiction and movies, but also in history and detailing of events in the past. The hero is the oldest and most popular archetype used in society and is usually an expression of our collective unconscious. Heroes strive to maintain justice and fight against evil. And it's this ability of the hero to stay true to themselves that ultimately makes them heroic in society's mind. So, hi Ashwin, hi Arindam. Hey, hi Shreya. Hey. It's great to have you both here to discuss this podcast. In the course of this episode, we look at uh, the relationship between heroes and institutions, some positive and negative aspects of having heroes in public policy issues as well. So Ashwin, you've done some research on how heroes come to be, right? Would you like to share some of that with us? Uh, sure, Shreya. I was uh, reading a book when I came across this quote by Bertolt Brecht. And it read, I quote here, unhappy the land that is in need of heroes. And I had not thought about it this way because I had always looked at heroes in isolation and I had never looked at them in the broader context of where they are placed in the society or in the community. And this got me thinking and and I realized that in a way it is true. You know, when a hero crops up, he is cropping up in a certain social context that necessitates a hero to emerge and do something or solve something. And and I realized, yeah, is that actually a representation of a certain ailment in the society? Is that a symptom? And I started to dig further into this. And the first question that we can answer in this is, why do they emerge? Or what are the reasons why heroes emerge? And uh, I came across this sociologist, Oren Klapp. He has written a wonderful paper called Hero Worship in America. And though it's uh, it's relevant uh, globally, it is not restricted to, even the concepts are not restricted to a single continent. And Broadly, what I could find from my readings was there are some biological reasons. Since we are uh, a social species, we are always looking for people or individuals to imitate as we learn and grow and adapt to our surroundings. And we always need that concept of an alpha ape to follow in the footsteps of. And so there is a biological angle to it. But for a conversation that we are going to have today, the sociological reasons are more relevant. And uh, Club gives a few steps in how heroes are created and worshipped. Uh, it all starts with a spontaneous popular homage. An event happens where the hero might have acted in a certain way or done something and that results in a popular homage to the hero, which is not something that is orchestrated or organized. It cannot be. It has to be spontaneous. This is followed up with a recognition of this honorable act or this individual for whatever they have contributed. And it is a formal recognition. This can 
be done by the state or by some other authority that holds legitimacy in the society and then you have this building up of this legend of this person as the news of their deeds spread across the land and they are commemorated everywhere and finally the legend turns into a cult and at this point the hero loses control of their own representation and it's the public that has ownership of what the hero is and what they represent so in a way if you think about it heroes are very distinct from each of us because they have achieved a social status that is at the top of the social hierarchy and none of us will ever achieve that unless we become a hero ourselves but even if we do then we probably become one in some other context so this social hierarchy is a very unique position and yet they are brought close to our lives through this concept of worship or or you know veneration and they are brought into our homes our lives they are told as in the form of stories in the form of anecdotes so it's a at this point they are a symbol and there have been attempts to you know uh, formalize this process through various ways uh, in the in the movie uh, domain you have the oscars we have various political titles military titles and so there is an attempt to formalize this but at the end of the day it is spontaneous and something that emerges out of the society rather than governments or the markets and we would think because we are all based in india we would think this is something that happens more in india and less in other countries but research shows that it is prevalent everywhere maybe the context in which the heroes emerge is different maybe it might be more in india in the sphere of cinema and bollywood and all that but in other nations it might be political or you know it it might be against the state in states that have a lot of strife so but it is the point is it has temporally and spatially existed everywhere from ancient greece to communist china to nigeria we have instances of this cropping up everywhere so it is a global human phenomenon and uh, over time these legends of heroes go on to become venerated ancestors and their living descendants start worshiping them and it might you know they are as you say a hero is a step down from a god and then you they you might even you know achieve dietic status someday and so this process of legend building and turning a real person into a symbol is a narrative taken over by the collective and is altered to represent an idealized trait in that society at that given point of time they become a symbol of something that the group sees or desires and it is used to reinforce social values and norms and heroes then provide a symbolic example of what people can and should strive for in the society and it is antithetical to the current power maybe or it is worship in a, f- a form of worship or practiced it it might be practiced underground in in a form of revolutionary movements it can be anything depending on the context in which the society functions so uh you know this is uh, there are instances of heroes being used to drive narratives and social movements also throughout the world so all of this begs the question of how do we look at heroes in the lens of public policy are they antithetical to the concept of institutions that we are trying to build in in our course of policy change and policy optimization are they a good thing that are tools to be used to drive change or are they something that needs to be suppressed through the use of institutions and accountability is is a system uh, a better tool for public policy rather than a hero uh, i would love to hear your thoughts guys what what do you think yeah lots to actually double click on what 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 ashwin said so starting from like one of the first points that he mentioned uh, is there some lacuna in society is there something uh, lacking in society which makes people want to have heroes right so uh, the other day uh, uh, we were talking right uh, it, it's for example in in india's context right we vote for for example we vote at the national level we vote at the state level and then probably we vote at the corporation level right or at the or at the third tier of uh, panchayati raj institutions right uh, 
Uh, but uh, that is just three levels of uh, uh, influence that a voter or, a, or the public has in uh, in terms of influencing public policy or even politics, right? Uh, compare that to maybe uh, some some place like the US, where people are voting for not just these three four levels, but even like say for the district attorney and all those other levels also, right? So there's many more avenues of public participation and um, ways in which people can. Uh, influence public policy. So that sort of makes we as Indians want to think of people as heroes who can really drive change in society, right? So leaders or heroes, right? I mean, um, leaders and heroes pave the way for decisive change. They are catalysts for change, right? And uh, in that sense, we want to look up to them because we probably don't have the wherewithal. We as people don't always have the power to bring about change unless it's via some hero, right? So that's one point. And then there was, there was one thing, uh, there was another thing that you mentioned about this then becoming a sort of a worship, right? A sort of hero worship that it changes into, right? So uh, Ambedkar uh, had a very interesting thing to say on this, right? In his last speech to the Constituent Assembly, right? He had, he had made this uh, statement and I quote, uh, Bhakti in religion may be a road to the salvation of the soul, but in politics, um, bhakti or hero worship is a sure road to degradation and to eventual dictatorship, right? So this is a very, uh, very important thing to keep in mind that heroes may evolve because of some particular work in a specific field, but then we, because we uh, put them upon a pedestal and we look at them as demigods, probably, we sort of follow them in whatever they say, right? So that sort of a tribalism also grows around the hero, right? And especially in today's uh, world of social media where everything gets hyped and uh, everything spreads very fast uh, and, and we uh, vent ourselves on social media, we sort of create an echo chamber around these sorts of tribalistic angles, right? So tribalism could be along principles like or or maybe along views or ideologies like somebody could be favoring socialism somebody could be favoring capitalism but there's also tribalism along the lines of following a person or following somebody who could be called a hero even though whatever that person might be saying in a particular context may not really be right right but that sort of hero worship then devolves into something which is not really good for uh politics or even public policy right so those are the two angles which i think are very important in terms of uh, heroes yeah. Just sort of, again, double clicking, if I'm going to quote Arindam, on what you both have said, right? I'm getting the sense that based on also some of the research about the hero archetype, right? How it's a representation of society's unconscious. But it's hard to identify where these hero narratives come from uh, at any given point of time and why they're so popular, why they gather so much attention from people in society. And with, which is why I thought just to, you know, give more insight. What if we sort of look at the relationship between heroes and institutions, right? In public policy, it's always understood that great institutions give us the best chance to create good policies for a long period of time. How do you think heroes fit into that whole idea, right? Like if we're looking at institutions, we're thinking of good safeguards, um, a history of good policy making, robust feedback mechanisms. Whereas what we know about heroes is that they're, that they're bold, they stay true to themselves, they are independent in thought, fearless, conviction, innovative, all of that. Do you think institutions have the capabilities of embodying these traits that heroes bring to the table? Uh, I think that humans have an innate need to anthropomorphize things that they extend empathy towards. And so, for instance, we all at some level anthropomorphize the Indian map, which is why Kashmir is so important to us, because it's like the head. And cutting off that head feels very, uh, you know, uh, very hard for us to uh, accept. So the problem is with institutions, you can never anthropomorphize them. And even for a very well-functioning institution, we always need a face of that institution to represent them, that entire institution organization in our heads. And that is why I think heroes are well placed to, you know, drive policy change and institutions can silently do the work in the back. But the problem is when the public or maybe this is an open secret amongst policymakers or the people inside that institution. But 
when the public, when the the masses, the public at large, start viewing things in this lens of looking at individuals uh, as the face of the institution or who the individuals driving the institution itself rather than the institution doing all the work. Don't you think it distracts from the systemic issues within the workings of that institution or the problems that they're trying to solve? Because you are placing a lot of onus on that person getting things done or being responsible for solving the issues. And it's it is also it might even have a negative impact on the institution, people within that institution or organization too, because it absolves them of responsibility. And there's a lot of responsibility is placed on the individual or the face. And therefore ultimately undermining collective responsibility and action. It might even be that the people, if they can come together, they can do they can uh, you know do have a huge impact on in certain areas, but they always just delegate it or leave it to the heroes to do it. And so you this entire focus on the individual rather than the collective, I think has more of a less desirous impact than a good one in, in terms of policy. Yeah. yeah. You know, Ashwin, on that, right, from what I gather about heroes, apart from the ones that you mentioned that are completely spontaneous and right place, right time kind of heroes, I would like to imagine that heroes are also individuals who find themselves someplace and decide to take a certain set of actions to change something in that institution or on that issue. So I would like to believe that heroes are pretty self-motivated, at least for that given point in time or for that specific goal. Now it's later that, you know, once this activity is done and this hero what the hero has done is publicized and it becomes common knowledge. Then, of course, you know, there is the narrative that, oh, we needed someone like this to come change that. You know, oh, when will this issue get solved? We're going to need someone who's going to come change that. But it's always said retrospectively when an individual, like a, I have trouble saying hero again and again, when a motivated individual is working on an issue, society is not clued in at that point in time. They're clued in later once you see results, once it's talked about, by which time it's also possible that that action has finished, result has been reached, and now we are just promoting that. It's quite possible there might be another individual or another set of individuals at that point taking action or doing different things, which will then... So I think the trickle-down effect is a little slow in terms of information. But once it's in common imaginations, it sort of takes really strong hold. And then it sort of has a life of its own, like I was saying earlier. You know, you see lots of people are doing lots of amazing things around us, right? But you still see only certain things catch a lot of momentum. And some issues stay on the sidelines for a really, really long period of time. Like you will see this for a lot of environmental issues. A lot of issues don't get as much traction in spite of good work by a few pioneering individuals. And so that's also something that I'm thinking about. Yeah, I think uh, there is a general progression and cause and effect sort of relationship when when it comes to institutions and uh, heroes that emerge in institutions and the way that heroes also then influence the institution, right? So it um, as, as again, coming back to the great man, uh, Rambedkar, uh, he had again said something uh, in the in his speech in Constitution on the working of the Constitution, right? So he had said, and I quote, uh, however good a Constitution may be, it is sure to turn out bad because those who are called to work, it happen to be a bad lot. However, however bad a Constitution may be, it, it may turn out to be good if those who are called to work, it happen to be a good lot, right? So just to take an example, right? If you consider the Election Commission of India, and, and Mr. T. N. Session, right? So the same election commission before the advent of Mr. T. N. Session had the same set of rules, same set of laws uh, that were already there in place uh, to govern the working of the election commission. It was supposed to be independent. It was supposed to be bold. It was supposed to not bow down to authority, right? But we've known about while, while the election commission has done a great job of conducting elections across this vast country of ours, there have been cases where it has been accused of not being partial and, and those sorts of things, right? But suddenly someone like Mr. TN Station comes in and uh, he doesn't believe in bending the rules or giving leeway. He upholds the rules, doesn't count out to any uh, government official or, or the politicians. And uh, that sort of changes our perception of the institution, right? It probably also makes 
the people involved in the entire election machinery to you know uh, suddenly become uh, more vigilant about their uh, responsibilities right and suddenly uh, the image of the election commission in the eyes of the people changes right now so the institution was there the rules were there but election commission as such was not looked at as a hero right so i can come back to whether institutions can be heroes right but with the advent of mr tian station and the way he handled the election process uh, i mean if you read his autobiography there have he's mentioned multiple examples where he's you know taken some decisions which have not been uh, to the liking of powers that be right even to the extent of saying that he could postpone elections if if you know certain sort of conditions were not met and those sorts of things right and there were efforts made to you know to undermine his powers by getting in election commissioners and other other sorts of things but then still he stood his ground right and after that we have sort of developed a different image of the election commission right and even now in the face of evidence to the contrary we still believe the ec to be very impartial right i mean we have had some questionable behavior on part of the election commission you know not really giving a keeping a blind eye to various transgressions on both on all sides right so uh, despite that we still believe in the election commission so the election commission for example has now become a sort of a hero right uh, similarly there's the rbi right that the independence of rbi is something that's supposed to be one of the canon rules right and we still believe the rbi to be independent uh, of the government and uh, to and we believe it will it will uh, do its duties impartially right and that's because we look at rbi as such maybe as a hero i don't know i don't know if we can call it a hero but that's sort of what we look up to right irrespective of who is like a hero uh, institution yeah. so uh, irrespective of whether uh, the people manning that institution are really being impartial we still look up to the election commission or the rbi right same for the judiciary despite quite a few problems that we might have we still want to believe in the sc right so i guess what happens is institutions when they are decaying or they are not really living up to their expectations there suddenly there is probably a person who rises and who sort of uh, stands his ground the institution also thereby gains in its value in the eyes of the people that sort of you know leaves a legacy for that institution also and people start looking up to it but then again there is a need for people to then uh, dissociate the leader or the hero from the institution right or what happens is people start placing too much of faith or too much of belief in the hero and not really look at the institution right so uh, we forget to strengthen the institution as time changes context also changes right so we probably have to keep on uh, just like uh, we believe the ec to be uh, impartial but then when the uh, procedure by which the ec is to be appointed is changed we don't really analyze that very well we don't really challenge it very well right the way it was done uh, recently right so not going to the merits of the case but the way it was done whether all the principles and uh, that we espouse were really followed or were they not really kept uh, held up right so we need to analyze those things so once but if we start uh, along the path of hero worship then we fail to look at institutions also and we fail to even uh, hold the heroes uh, to higher standards right uh, because people start having blind faith and uh, that's also detrimental to uh, public life yeah yeah i mean the fascinating points it's just uh, like you said right context changes with time a hero individual is also not static in their actions across time and that also changes this also reminds me of the concept of threshold events where uh, like you said like an organization is decaying it's stuck in a rut for a while and then you need an individual to sort of come bring new ideas bring renewed conviction and passion to sort of pull that organization back on track and it can also be possible that a lot of events lead up to this activity happening but that's also in a specific point in time you can find that many years later that's not relevant anymore so it looks like society will also have to constantly be vigilant and critical and have intellectual curiosity to do a fact check at every given point of time the way i think about this especially the point that you made arindam that the the fact is tn station came and you know raised the standards of the election commission in many people's eyes the fact is should that scenario have even existed in the first place so assuming the initial idea that i had is true that heroes are represent a certain ailment and they are a symptom of that ailment when they emerge in that case what is happening is that we are relying on individual conviction and individual ethics and the individual standards to have positive outcomes which means that our performance floor is very low i would like 
the even the institutions that we have the performance floor of those institutions to be higher so that even if a person without a lot of conviction gets appointed or a person without who's not very ethical gets appointed they still are forced because of the accountability checks because of the transparency to do a decent enough job that people don't sit and wish that another tn station was in their place and maybe if by chance another tn station does come to the election commission and then let them raise the performance ceiling higher but let let the performance floor be at a stage where everyone does a satisfactory job of fulfilling their duties as far as they are in that institution so that that is what we should strive towards is my opinion i think that it is uh, you rightly mentioned it's actually it's also the responsibility of the hero if you can say it that way it's also the responsibility of the hero to ensure that that floor is either maintained or it's raised right and uh, the institutions are strengthened so that when that person leaves the institution doesn't again decay into uh, you know an abyss and that's very important so for example and that's not just left up to the heroes right uh, that's why people also have to be vigilant say for example there has to be some principles uh, by which uh, all institutions should run it so for example in the realm of say taxation right there's no reason why any finance minister who comes in should influence policy in such a way that we go back go to uh, such retrograde steps like retrospective taxation right so the public policies the threshold or the floor that you mentioned right should be set in such a way that certain ideas have to undergo a lot of scrutiny before even the hero or the leader is allowed to you know influence it right and uh, similarly say in the case of judiciary right uh, bail is the rule uh, not an exception right so that sort of a rule has to be followed by the judiciary it doesn't need to it shouldn't require a hero in the form of maybe a chief justice or some high court judges to you know enforce that rule and while while a hero might enforce that rule and it might linger on for some time but uh, what happens when that when that person leaves or uh, retires right it shouldn't again go back to that uh, lower equilibrium that the responsibility to maintain that equilibrium stays with the people but uh, it's also a responsibility of the hero to ensure that the institutions are strengthened the rules are strengthened the and if if it would be my liking it would be better to ensure that these rules go towards being more liberal and those sorts of principles but yeah that's the responsibility of the hero also to some extent i also like to just share that as i'm listening to you both talk right i also think that homeostasis is also sort of the norm in uh, most cases right it's hard to um anticipate the needs of a future time and prepare for it when what we're doing right now is the most comfortable thing and you can also see this sort of mirrored in so many of our uh, myths and stories right almost all of our stories are uh, have these biblical sort of a precipice where we manage to find ourselves in and then you need someone to come help us out of it and even in in the past and in history this has happened at least in business at least where there are leaders that have saved organizations from like the brink of uh, acquisition or from ruin and it's not like a far off thought now if you're going to say how did we get to this that seems like a mixture of just being comfortable where you are uh, not being vigilant enough uh, improper risk assessment there are multiple things that can go into it and it can also attribute it to complex systems emergence i would think that it's wishful thinking to expect us to be already prepared at any given point of time for anything uh, where we wouldn't need someone to step in with a specific disruptive skill set to sort of be bold and all of that i think this happens all the time and we do need these kind of exceptional individuals who are willing to put their neck on the chopping block and sort of see what they can do but it also what sort of differentiates these kind of leaders from others in an organization how many people can you find that would be bold enough to take choices like what arindam was saying about tn station right a lot of people like to conform of course i'm generalizing here but as a society we do conform a lot we are quite comfortable and that isn't a great recipe for being prepared for being vigilant anticipating the needs of uh, tomorrow you don't yet know so i feel like this is inevitable in a way and this will keep happening yeah uh, i think it's, it's a good point to mention about homeostasis right so i mean 
the body always tries to you know in the context of public life also right our society there'll be there'll be instances of high activity when a, when say a hero emerges but then the society would always come down to some equilibrium right so there was this there's an interesting uh, framework for analysis that uh, some uh, historians have used to analyze gandhiji's uh, struggle movements right so it's called the struggle uh, true struggle uh, strategy right where a phase of say a non mass movement or war of position sort of inevitably follows a phase of extra legal mass struggle right so we we have seen gandhi ji for example have uh, have a movement and then for years there's there's nothing there's no uh, real mass movement that happens right and he was criticized for that but his, the idea was that you know people do not have the capacity to always lead a sustained mass struggle right so similarly when a hero emerges there will be a lot of activity there will be new rules set there will be new principles that will be adhered to but then either when the hero uh, leaves the scene or even when the hero is on the scene after a while there will be some equilibrium to which the body or the country as a body will settle down to right and uh, that point is very important to ensure that we don't devolve to something which is uh, which is lower than what it was earlier or not at least a position from where it's difficult to again emerge back or from where we again need another hero to you know give us salvation so to say yeah yeah arindam i think that's also the crux of what ashwin is getting at in that at every given point of time you need a new hero to come rescue us and then there are those issues of heroes becoming synonymous and more powerful than they need to be as well so and that in turn sort of erode societal ownership right it seems like a seems like a chain reaction almost what do you have to say about that ashwin that is uh, true and so i think our aspiration should be to you know break out of that chain or make that chain as slow as possible because uh, if you look at the modern society at large you see that we have been trying in all our major reforms to come out of that loop for instance probably you would have that loop a lot more prevalent in monarchies and now the world is moving towards more accountable governmental systems in the form of democracy or or various forms of democracy where you are trying to break that and you are trying to establish that minimum performance floor where things can be uh, things can be run in a predictable uh, consistent manner with some improvements happening from time to time uh so yeah that i think is uh, should be our aspiration to go forward because uh, reliance on heroes is like like we have many uh, unintended consequences or unanticipated consequences of relying on an individual as a linchpin to so many things i think there are quite a few disadvantages uh, to uh... to just uh, relying on a hero right uh, there's over simplification of like complex issues uh, the focus on that individual hero can sometimes lead to very simplistic uh, solutions to complex policy channel challenges uh, that's then that's because there's a personality cult right uh, that prioritizes the individual over the actual policies or outcomes right so and an individual could be resistant to criticism so it could be echo chambers around him there could be yes people or yes men around him so that sort of uh, makes it difficult to really look at the issue and the focus is always on the individual right the teamwork uh, aspect of public policy uh, political life that's that sort of overlooked and we we developed an unrealistic expectations when the when the framework itself is not right we are then uh, we are we are uh, on the other end developing unrealistic expectations about what that single person can achieve right um, so uh, that sort of brings in the other aspects that we talked about there's the neglect of institutional processes um, uh, there's no checks and balances there's a short term focus right because the hero uh, for various reasons uh, maybe he would look for quick heroic victories which then prioritize a short term wins over uh, say long term uh, sustainable uh, solutions right so while heroes in public policy are required to jolt the society uh, into action but uh, it's also important to maintain a balanced uh, perspective yeah and it doesn't make society's rule any easier having a steady stream of heroes it's just very repetitive it doesn't uh, improve society as a whole uh, in that uh, we're not able to do this ourselves so i think like ashwin says having a threshold where we're functioning at a higher productivity level and then depending on how what need arises having a hero individual sort of bring up bring some fresh perspectives 
um, seems more healthy uh, in that sense. And one more thing I was wondering as we were all speaking is that we are, we are automatically talking about heroes or individual action in the context of the system that we already have, especially in India, which is telling because that, that means we think that the system is good and we are fortunate enough and privileged enough to be in such a context. And uh, to just uh, a wild guess is uh, our, our, if, if this conversation were to be happening amongst a group of uh, strife the nations of uh, the African continent or, you know, and their, they, probably their automatic imagination of a hero would be in the form of vigilantism or something that is happening outside the system. So the fact that we are all talking about individual action within the broader context of the system we have itself is something that we should be proud of. And this, this problem of hero worship devolving into vigilantism or in general aspects that we that are not really conducive to democratic life, that, that applies to even India or I would say even developing countries, right? So developed countries, right? So uh, for example, because the law and order system probably doesn't work very beautifully uh, in India, we uh, we run the risk of, you know, uh, vigilantism taking over, right? Uh, so say encounter deaths or you know, bulldozer justice that we that we talk about. I mean, we we need to ensure that whatever whoever is the hero who emerges or whatever we follow, uh, whoever we follow, we don't really get down to these sorts of policies, right? Which uh, shouldn't have any place in a uh, democratic republic, right? Uh, so we need to ensure uh, that. Yeah, it just at the end of the day, it just means that our performance floor, if I can use that term again, is. Right may not be as high as we desire because that's something that we always aspire to improve but it is still not very low either it is at a reasonable standard where the system can continue to evolve and exist and and just to give an example of uh, how blindly people can follow heroes right and the problems that can create so recently i was seeing this video where a reporter asks a small kid who's chewing tobacco or gutkha the report asked the kid, aren't you afraid of the health problems that can be caused by this? Aren't you afraid of cancer? So and that kid replies, uh, well, uh, Shah Rukh Khan doesn't uh, face a problem. So why should why should I have that problem, right? Probably Shah Rukh Khan doesn't even use that good car that he advertises. But uh, the kid believes that uh, he doesn't face any problem, right? So that's the, that's the peril of following heroes without uh, putting thinking rationally uh, yourself. Yeah, That's so true. And it's fascinating, uh, your example. It's just we switch back to these heuristics so quickly when we're not actively thinking through everything uh, and that can have uh, disastrous effects. So Ashwin, Arindam, this has been a great chat, fascinating insights. We can bring this one to a close. I was going to make a joke about how we're all heroes in the making, but then the latter part of our podcast has sort of made me decide against it. Thank you again for being part of this podcast. And to our listeners, we'll see you all next time. Thank you, Shreya. Thank you, Ashwin. It was great to be part of this. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. If you liked our show, dive into Takshashila's research on technology, strategy, and economic affairs. Check us out at our Twitter handle at takshashilainst or our website takshashila.org.in. <laughs>